Hello again, everyone, and welcome once more to my series of building foam RC model aircraft using the sectioned foam fuselage technique and hot wire cut foam wing cores. Today we're going to get more in-depth into it. The previous two videos were mostly just conversations about getting straightened up on what you need and what we're going to do. But today we actually get started on the build. We're going to take the JPEG that we converted in the last video and import that into SketchUp. We're going to scale it to the proper size and then I'll show you how to develop the templates that you're going to need to build the model. Before we get started on that though, there's one thing that you do have to do. You do have to determine what thickness of foam that you're going to use to do the sections. Now I'm going to do these in two inch thick foam. I'm going to do an expanded bead white styrofoam as most people call it model and the extruded just to show you the difference and also a, a, the little bit of difference between the techniques. The shell uh, thickness for instance does not have to be as thick with extruded foam. But again, before we do that, you have to know the thickness of your foam. If you cannot get two inch thick foam, don't worry about it. Almost everywhere in the, in the country, you can go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and get three quarter inch underlayment foam. Uh, this foam comes from both Dow, which are, that's the blue foam, and the pink Owens Corning Fomular foam. So if you can get it, get the lighter foam like Fomular 150, which is 15 PSI foam. It's a little less dense than some of the heavier ones. And light is what we're looking for here. But if you can only get three quarter inch foam, you can laminate them together. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But the important thing is, you're going to have to know the thickness of your foam. In the particular model that we're using, the Zero, the uh, A6M Zero, the fuselage does not change dramatically within short uh, lengths. It has a gradual, it's just a gradual tube, which is great for the thicker foams, like the two inch foam. If you were developing a fuselage that had a lot of uh, curves in a short space, a more organic shape, then actually the thinner foam is even better because what we'll do is we'll section the fuselage into thinner slices. This is almost like if you do a 3D printer, you're building in layers. Well, the layers that we're going to use for this model, uh, in my case, are going to be two inches. In your case, they're going to be whatever you can come up with with your foam. So, Let's get started on how to get your foam to whatever thickness you want. All right, guys, we were talking about foam thickness. And another word is, before we go on, we're going to be using metric measurements because I'm not going to spend all day on CAD trying to divide 13 sixteenths by 9 sixty-fourths and doing that crap. So why the United States? has not gone to an all metric system it just boggles my mind. But we're going to be using metrics. This is uh, an example of the Dow Formula 150 underlayment. As you can see, it shows when you go to buy it as being three quarters of an inch thick. This in actual measurement is 20 millimeters. So if you end up with these underlayment sheets, measure the thickness quite accurately in millimeters and decide what you've got. So if you laminate these together, if you end up needing the extra thickness, you're going to end up with a 40 millimeter thick piece of foam. And that will be about what you would need for this model. 40 will do fine. Uh, you might even go so far as to laminate three thicknesses and have it as 60 millimeters. Maybe that would be even better. And I'll show you in just a moment what uh, you need to use for laminating material. You know, one last thing about this underlayment is that it comes with uh, plastic facing. 
Uh, some from Dow come, I think, with only one side plastic face. But whichever way you get, and whatever foam you end up with, make sure you take that plastic facing off. It just peels right off, but we need that plastic off of the foam. Here's the regular expanded bead uh, EPS foam, and this is also from Lowe's uh, here locally in Jacksonville. This is advertised as two inches thick, but the actual measurement is 58 millimeters, and we're going to use the actual measurement when we space out the sections of the fuselage. So 58 millimeters here, 20 millimeters here to start with, and let me show you what you can use to laminate the thinner foam to get it to any thickness that you want. When talking about how to make the thinner foam into thicker segments for what we're going to do, uh, remember that some of these foam products in the three-quarter inch underlayment series come with a plastic facing on one or both sides and that has to be removed first. Just wanted to make that reminder clear because otherwise it's going to be a mess. You're going to go to a lot of trouble for nothing. Laminating this foam is very easy. The products used are cheap and available everywhere. But wait, somebody might say, once you glue these things together and we're going to hot wire cut it, will the adhesive that you use interfere with hot wire? And the answer is no. Light coats of spray adhesive will not interfere with a hot wire cutter at all. It'll go through it like butter, like it's not even there. And while we're talking about spray adhesive, this particular spray adhesive, it's an inexpensive brand. It's called Duro. Walmart has their own brands, and it's all you need. Now, if you visit some of the foam forums, uh, and some of the model building forums, they'll tell you that regular spray adhesive will eat foam. And they're right. If you put this on in a heavy, wet coat, it'll eat it. But that's not what you want to do. The volatile uh, carrier in here is what attacks the foam, not the adhesive. So if you'll stand off with these cans to about 18 to 20 inches and put on a light coat, very light coat, then you're not going to have any trouble with it eating the foam at all. You don't need a lot because this stuff is very aggressive and it will stick the foam together for you. Do not use a lot, just enough to get the foam sheet to stick. And one other little trick, you probably noticed that can doesn't have a top on it. That's because the tops are in here. How many of you have cans of spray paint or adhesive sitting around the house with a top on it that's so clogged up you can't use it anymore? Well, the answer to that is take the tops off, pull them, drop them in a little jar of naphtha. Naphtha, Ronsonol lighter fluid, the stuff that comes in a yellow can, that's naphtha. Uh, a much less expensive way to buy naphtha is to go to Walmart and buy a gallon of Coleman camping gas. That's naphtha. So take the tops off and after you use it and drop it in a jar of naphtha and they'll stay clear of blockages forever. So now let's move on. Now that we've got our foam thicknesses decided, let's get to CAD and start drawing. Okay, everyone, this is my workspace window using SketchUp, and this is SketchUp 2017. Uh, for right now, don't worry about all these extra plugins that you see over here. This is a standard toolbar and something that you can take and move around anywhere you would like it. But don't worry about the plugins. The only one that we might be interested in a little bit later is the Bezier Curves, and that's a plugin, and I'll talk about that and show you where you can get it. But for right now, this is just a standard view like you would open up SketchUp Make. The first thing we have to do, of course, is get the area that we're going to be working in set the way we want it. For this two-dimensional work, what we need is the camera view up here, which 
controls the way that you're looking at your drawing. You need that camera view set on parallel projection, not a perspective view, but parallel projection. That gives you a flat plane uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, disappearing uh, perspective views. So it gives you a nice flat plane to work on in 2D. Next, we've got to import the file. Come over to File, Import, find the uh, model plan that you want, and this has already been changed to JPEG, as you can see here. Import the JPEG. It will start coming up very slowly since I'm recording this screen too. It will start coming up and you can decide where you want to put it. Now I'm going to put it right here and drop it onto the ground plane at origin. And there it is. Don't worry about sizing right now. We're going to uh, we're going to rescale this to the exact size that we want here in just a moment. Okay, now it finally loaded. Now we can go to top view and we can zoom in. Now you can either hit Z and change it to a magnifying glass or if you're back with the, the regular selection, you can zoom in with your mouse wheel. So now you see the plan that we have uh, loaded it loaded fine as an image and now we can start working on it one of the things that you might want to consider if your computer is uh, strong enough SketchUp imports all of these background images at fairly low resolution so if you zoom in you might see some of the lines getting a little bit muddy uh, if that's the case with your program and your computer is up to it, you can go to Windows up here um, and select Preferences. And then down this tab on the left, it says OpenGL. Now this, what this does is uh, increases the resolution of the images that you import. Now it says that it's a texture, use maximum texture size, but don't pay any attention to that. It, it applies to everything. It applies to JPEG files too. So make sure that you use fast feedback and maximum texture size are both checked in your SketchUp preferences. Now, if you're having problems with it running that way, uncheck them because it takes a fairly decent card in your computer to run it that way. Well, now we've got the plan in here, but the plan is, you know, whatever size you happen to drop it at. We don't know. What we do know is that we want a 36-inch wingspan here. Instead of going tip to tip, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, half the span and scale it to 18 inches to give us our full 38 or 36-inch span. Now, I've been talking about inches, but we're actually going to work in millimeters. 18 inches will convert to approximately 458. It was 457 point something, but we'll round it to 458, 458 millimeters. So you can scale it by using the tape measure tool. Hit T on the keyboard that brings up the tape tool. And we'll select the center of the wing panel here, let me scale in a little bit, okay, Let's get close to the center, select that, and run it out, you can see the red line, run it out on the red axis until you get out here to the wing tip, and you can see a vertical show just at the wing tip. Now, when you click one time, you'll notice a box at the lower left-hand corner of the screen come open. Before you do anything else, in this box, just start typing 458. Hit enter, and it pops up with a do you want to resize the model? And yes, you do. So hit yes, and bingo. There, your model is in there. The whole image has been resized to the correct size 
and we're ready to go. And if you don't believe that, what you can do is go down here with your tape measure again, select key on the keyboard, come in here to the middle, select, go out here to the end, again on the red axis, and there it is, 458 millimeters. So you're there. So your scaling was successful. Now we have an image that we can start developing uh, parts from. And now I'll show you how to do that. Okay guys, in order to keep these videos at a reasonable length, we'll call it a day for this one, scaling. And in the next part, part four, we'll start in with making the actual formers and, uh, and demonstrating how to do that for both thicknesses of foam. The white two inch EPS and will also laminate up some of the uh, three quarter or 20 millimeter uh, XPS. So we'll show how to develop formers and move these things along one step at a time. Thanks for staying with us and see you next time.